And we have uh, player coach Josh Greco of the Queen City Browns with us here to talk about the upcoming season in the NBHL, also to talk about a very special event on Saturday, May 6th. So Josh, take it away. Yeah, first of all, Mark, thanks for the time here. Uh, whenever I get to talk about hockey, it's always a good day. So um, <clears throat> yeah, returning as the defending Carolina division and tier three national champions, uh, the Queen City Crowns, very honored and privileged to be player coach this year, uh, make personnel decisions and then lead us in, into the uh, the game day situation. So we got our work cut out for us being, we got the target on our back, but uh, we're excited about this year here. Thanks, Josh. As, as you can see, I have my purple on in observance of the crowns, uh, but there's more than just the crowns this year. There's another team. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I am, you know, quite intentionally wearing a hat at the Charlotte Street Hockey League because I am proud that our NBHL portion um, of, Char of Charlotte Street Hockey is expanding. Uh, so we're, we're expanding into a second team for the first time uh, this season, the Charlotte Rise will be playing their inaugural season with Coach Mike Steckler. Um, I believe that you've completed an interview with him, and you know by the time this gets posted, it'll probably be side by side with his. So, uh, just a testament to the growth of our program. Um, there's more coming in future years. I can see that vision too, with more than two teams. But for right now, I'm just pleased to offer this experience, this NDHL experience that was so exciting and fun last year, to double the number of people this year. And the people that are coming out on Saturday, May 6th, what can they expect at the YMCA? Yes. Yep. So let me just talk a little bit about the event. I'm sure, you know, people clicking on this interview or watching this already know something about it. But uh, this day is special to us because this is a, an exhibition game between these two teams. Uh, you know, it's the soccer term of a friendly. We're going to be playing an exhibition game against each other. Now, it doesn't mean it's not going to be competitive. It's going to be, you know, the guys are going to want to win and, and compete out there. Uh, but this is more for a milestone in our program to show the community, um, you know, friends and family, but, and, you know, hockey names too, uh, and, and all facets of hockey, ice hockey, roller hockey, that, you know, our ball hockey program is expanding and, and really growing um, and, and playing at a high level. I think there's going to be a lot of raised eyebrows with the level of competition that's going to be shown at this event. And it's going to set the tone for our Carolina division season, which happens two weeks later. Uh, we open up Sunday, May 21st in the Apex uh, um, against two other teams from Raleigh. And of course, we'll, we'll be playing against each other too. So this is like a preview to uh, the entire Carolina division season, but uh, it's also a milestone for our progress as Charlotte Street Hockey. That's great. So people coming out that are casual observers or fans or, or friends or family, um, there might be prizes, there might be other things available for them to enjoy, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And so you're right. I did speak to Mike last night. Um, always a great interview with Mike. He's always uh, very candid and very uh, upfront about certain things. And, <laughs> you know, he talked about rosters a little bit. <clears throat> and obviously you're going to be keeping many or at least some of what you had before. But some may not be. Some may be on the rise this year. And um, how do you manage that? Because you're going to be obviously player coach. Uh, taking over uh, from Jeff for Jeff Kennedy from last year. Uh, what challenges does that present to you and the team in general, knowing that um, there's been a little bit of a split? Yeah, that's a great question. So the rosters are set. Uh, we, we made those decisions about a month ago and there's some tough decisions there. Um, it was, it was a growth opportunity for me uh, because I had to speak with, with people who I was close with and, and friends and still am uh, but had to make some tough decisions for what was best for the the vision of what this roster could be. Uh, and there were decisions that were made that were based on different uh, attributes than skill level at times. So, for example, there's people plenty talented enough to be on this team that I, I said, you know, we don't have a spot for you this season. So it was coming to grips and coming to peace with that. But I feel really confident about the guys that we did choose to be here and, and the roster that we have. And at the same time, um, you know, I know that the Charlotte Rises are going to, they're going to be nipping at our heels and they're, they're going to be, it's going to be great competition. It's, we're not going to just roll over them and the exhibition game or the season. It's going to be a great challenge um, for, for our side and, and great, uh, you know, a little test for us. But, um, but yeah, so I, I'm confident about 
the roster that we have. We made some very tough decisions with it, um, but we're, we're ready to move forward here. We're ready to put it into practice. I want to be very clear about that because for the for the at the casual observer for people that are just starting to follow the CSHL, um, there may be of a tendency to think that while well, the players that didn't make the the crowns go to the rise and the rise is a, a, a tier below that. That's not the case. Not the case. Um, you know, there's some things that went down with the Carolina division over the past couple months that kind of changed our approach with it. Um, we had four teams in the division, one backed out. So it kind of caused a little bit of, uh, you know, what's the best way to move forward? How do we do this? Uh, some things fell into place, though, with, you know, there's two teams from Raleigh and now there's two teams from Charlotte. All right. So what we did was we made we were already in the process of making one team. And so when the opportunity came to make a second team, it was, you know, how do we best go about this? So we had to source some additional people who were interested. Um, you know, some people, some things happened with the schedule. We, we changed the day uh, on which we play games. So that actually made people more available um, that previously said no, or, or that they couldn't make the original dates work. And, uh, and we formulated the two teams. So, um, you know, they're, the way they were made and what, what Raleigh did was uh, put together a team to, to really compete. Um, uh, and, and, you know, maybe on paper, um, the roster is more experienced guys at the A level, um, but we're not going to take their second team lightly, just like we're not going to take the rise light, uh, team rightly. So I think any team can win this division. I think that's the main point that I want to get across here. It doesn't matter what what type of things are on paper or who's playing for what team. What's going to make the difference is how the teams gel together, how they handle adversity throughout the season. And I know even with the talent that we have, we're going to face adversity. Things are going to happen that are not going to be all rainbows and butterflies. And I feel like we're prepared to handle that. Uh, but that's also me saying that sitting here before the season starts. So it'll always show up different or foreign to how I think it's going to show up. But uh, what my role is, is to be as prepared as possible to handle those things, to navigate the, this team through it and to to remain that number one contender out of the Carolina division here. You're a very productive player, obviously. What type of motivation can you provide while also being a productive player on the court? It's got to be a challenge. Yeah, my role this year is different than any role that I've ever been in before. And I recognize that um, it's not to produce, although that's part of it. Uh, when I'm on the court with four other guys playing hockey, my one of my main goals is to make my teammates around me better. My role this year is to do that with the entire roster, whether I'm on the court with them or not. Um, so it's a big a bit of a heavier burden, but it's also you know, challenging me to set up structure and systems with my assistant captains and some other leaders on the team to build in some of these things that, you know, I either don't have to worry about or it gets filtered before it gets to me so that I can remain focused on what's most important. That's taking care of the team. It's not just me producing as, as a player out there. So I'm excited about that challenge. It's, it's you know, I've never been a part of that before. Um, with the exception, you know, I play ice hockey as well. I've been a, a, a player captain coach for my ice hockey team for about three years now. So I do have some of that experience with in-game game management that I'm actually really looking forward to with, uh, you know, the, the ball hockey is about twice twice as large of, of a roster as, as ice hockey. Uh, so it's not just managing 10, 12, 14 people. It's, you know, 20, 22, 24 people. Uh, but I have that experience and I'm looking forward to applying some of that experience to this in-game uh, player coach role that I'm, I'm getting into this year. That's great. Can't wait to see that. When I spoke to uh, Coach Steckler, he had mentioned that one of the reasons why um, the Browns were so success successful, especially getting to the Mila Cup in New Jersey, was um, how close you had become, the faith that you had in each other. And you had even mentioned uh, last year or uh, other players on the team had mentioned, you know, we didn't take our jerseys off between games. We kept our jerseys on. And there was a lot of that unity on the bus traveling. How much of that played into the success playing on a tennis court and then winning that? Even Coach Steckler said last night, we, we can make a documentary about it. <laughs> um, that that's how um, important, how you know, big that became last year. Perfect example of of our quote unquote shortcomings working uh, for us. <clears throat> You look at a lot of these teams in the Northeast and other parts of the country, like ball hockey is so normalized. It's in the blood. It's It's been around for decades. 
um, because we come from a humble place playing on the tennis court, like we're all so grateful that we just get the chance to play with each other. You know, our one of our assistant captains rallying cries last year, Jim Bateman, was we're, we're just playing hockey with our friends. Like just that yeah. mentality is what we what we use to get through the Carolina division. And then we fully embrace that um, in New Jersey in the Milet Cup. So, you know, that came from such a genuine place of like, that's who we are. We're just we're, we're a bunch of idiots out there just running around playing hockey um, and got each other's backs. And we all appreciated the opportunity that we have because. Last year we didn't have it, and a couple of years before before that we didn't have it even with CSHL. You know, we're, we're still a very relatively new program compared yeah. to some of the other programs around the country. So we use that to our advantage. Yeah, when I came down here in the summer of 2020, um, I don't think you had more than maybe one division at that time for CSHL, barely, and it was mm -hmm. new at the time. And then you added the uh, another. Um, this past year and certainly you're going to add probably another one or two in the years to come maybe to a ladies division uh, maybe an old timers division for people like me that might be able to get yeah. in you never know you know yeah. and, and there's a lot of people obviously migrating down here from other cities we talk about that all the time how does let's go back to the roots of just pick up you know people think of uh like you said pick up is just it's fun yeah it is fun um, it's just a way to team build and community build on a Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon. But there's more to that, isn't there? Because there's there's development happening in that that plays into the leads that we're talking about. Absolutely. Uh, I think I, what I first want to pay homage to is that hockey can be um, an escape, uh, like a, a mecca, a place you can go where you can just, you know, you just have fun out there. Um mm -hmm. There's so much garbage that we deal with in our lives. You know, it's so easy to forget that, right? This is a sport. We show up, we try to win, we compete. But the understory is that we all got stuff going on in our lives and hockey is an escape. It's a place to, you know, it just feels like a pure uh, way to outlet some of the things that, you know, are tough to deal with in our lives. So in a way, a Saturday morning pickup is just like, you know, I think of a couple of guys, right? Like Caleb Brown on our team, mm -hmm. he, he attributes hockey to basically saving his life. Like he found it and he loves it. And he just, he, he loves being a part of it so much. I think of a Charlotte Rise uh, roster member, uh, Vinny Zandi. Yes. He did an interview with him in the newsletter a couple couple weeks yes. ago. About his transition from playing pickup to being in the B League and the difference of mentality that, that it means to him um, going and making that transition. So what hockey means to us in this area is huge and it starts with that place of just pure fun like when you go to pick up there's no you know we keep score and there's mini games but it's you know you, you, between games you're just shooting the crap with with guys and just talking about life sure. and, and that's where the bonding happens right there and you, you start to learn about people in the area and making these connections and it's just so rewarding that's what sports should be that's why i love sports so much so yeah. this is like, you know, you can see the progression. And now we have a youth program that's leading into our, our pickup places and then our league. We have B, B League and A League. And now we have multiple uh, professional, you know, semi-pro turning into pro uh, teams that are involved in, in the National Ball Hockey League here. It's so impressive to see and such an honor to cover. Um, this year will be the the first full season of covering the NBHL. And um, last year, of course, we did a little bit of that, that coverage toward the end, um, but I honestly didn't know a whole lot about it. And, and a lot of people didn't. And so um, the knowledge has really helped in terms of people coming out. Look at just what we have on a normal game day in the CSHL in, in Weimar. You have <clears throat> girlfriends and wives and brothers and sisters and friends coming out and lawn chairs and food. And I mean, it's, it, it's becoming a, through community event, which is great to see. Yeah. Yeah. A, a word that comes to mind is brotherhood. And I don't want to single out the, the females so we can say sisterhood too, but it's just, it's a, such a camaraderie uh, of people. And, and I, what I like about it is that it expands beyond single teams. So there's teams that are tight knit, but you come to one of our games um, with teams that aren't playing and they're, everybody's intermingling with each other. We, we have such a respect for each other that uh, that's what this program is all about. And that's why I'm proud, proud to be a part of it and be leading it right now. It's very exciting. Um, how big can this get in Charlotte? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we've had an ongoing rink building initiative meeting uh, about every other week for the past year. 
And the purpose of that is to get more facility access for, for the game that we love. So we've mentioned a couple of times we play on a tennis court. In a couple of years, Mark, we're going to look back on that and say, remember when. Um, and it's going to be crazy to even picture a time when we played on anything but regulation size courts. So I'm bound and determined like that's coming. And once that infrastructure is here, like we're doing what we're doing without that infrastructure, which is crazy to even think about. So once we get that infrastructure, uh, to answer your question, I mean, the sky is the limit. We're talking, we could probably have multiple, you know, twice the number of NBHL teams next year. Um, you know, we, we can expand our, our CSHL capacity, uh, our youth division, our AD, like you mentioned before, like maybe even a C league, uh, females over 40, the, the opportunity is, is endless. And for somebody who might be watching this from another part of the country and think really like Charlotte, really, there is demand here for hockey. People love hockey. Um, you know, most are transplants and, um, half of them seem like they're from Buffalo, which is okay with me, but, uh, but that's, that's a deal. Like people move here because it's a great city to, to live in. And it's like, oh yeah, there's hockey here too. Well, we're going to put hockey on the map here and it's going to be a destination. Uh, at least that's my goal in the South here for people to come to play hockey. That's great. Um, <clears throat> Very difficult to follow up a championship season. Those teams are going to be gunning for you in Raleigh, as they were last year. And um, how difficult is that going to be to remain focused and keep players under control in terms of controlling any type of, uh, you know, uh, anxiety they may have enthusiasm and and just say you know what we just have to take it one game at a time because it's it's not going to be easy to repeat yeah i'm going to channel my inner eric levine here who would say like this is all fuel for us like thank thank god we have the target on our back because we're going to use that to our advantage the skill level that this team has is is tops in the country as far as the tier three team is concerned like we have no doubt that we're more than capable of repeating and like I mentioned before, I think my role is to, to keep the glue together because this adversity is going to come. People are going to be gunning for us. Um, and it's it's not going to be easy, but that's we fully embrace that. Like, like come and get us. Like, that, that's what this is all about here. Um, so, yeah, embracing the inner Eric Levine here because he, he feeds and thrives off of that. And we're going to channel that as a team. Um, uh, up to almost 40 percent of our roster is actually new new people. We have eight or 10 rookies on this team that didn't play NBHL last year. So this is going to be a first taste for them. And they're going to look to the veterans for, for you know, how to handle some of this adversity and and uh, and, and what we do um, in, in response to that. So it's a challenge that we're, you know, I'm grateful for it. I, I turn into, I turn the challenges into opportunities here because that's what this, that's really what this is. And we're going to have that extra fuel lit under us that we wouldn't have had if we didn't win the national title last year. Now you piqued my interest, so I have to ask you about some of your key players that yeah. you're going to have in 2023. Who are they? Oh my gosh, I mean, um, the way I'm managing or thinking about our roster is is top six uh, people who are going to get some more playing time because they can put the ball in the net. And uh, Mark, I'll tell you, we have eight, nine, ten people that could be in the top six. So the advantage that I have as a player coach is that uh, this is going to be merit based. If you're producing, you're in that top six. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're if you're hustling, you're going to be you know one of those players in the last five minutes that protects a, a one goal lead. Uh, you're going to be one of those players in the last five minutes when we need a goal. You're going to be out there. So you know you can talk about uh, Jack Ingles, um, Joseph Marshall, uh, Jim Bateman, guys mm -hmm. that you know are are in that top six. Uh, newcomers, Nathan Hans. I got Brandon Fritz. And then, and then after that, you know, uh, I probably left a few players out. They could be in that top six, but then there's role players, people who are, are pests out there. I think of, you know, an Eric Levine and a Jesse Termaine, guys who just run around and be crazy and, and disrupt things. So we have so many weapons in so many different ways that I'm looking forward to see, seeing how that falls into place and how we can balance that in a, in a roster where so many players are going to demand playing time and there's only so much that we can give. But it's going to be it's going to go to the people who are who are producing, who are hustling, who deserve it out there. And that's that's what I'm looking forward to. And when that happens, it could produce some type of um, a negative feeling for those that may not be in the lineup. And how do you deal with um, providing that type of leadership where you can take somebody aside and say, you know what, maybe now is not your time, but you will have an opportunity at a later time because that can create some friction within a team. Yeah. Yeah, um, this is where 
the framing up front, uh, how we handle the beginning of the season and how we tap into the leadership group that we've assembled, um, you know, I'll pay homage to the assistant captains that we named. So Jim Bateman, Jack Ingles and Brandon Fritz, all, all of whom, whom I've, I've mentioned are going to help me manage that process uh, because there's going to be things that come up. There's going to be, you know, egos. There's going to be, hey, mm -hmm. why, why am I not getting that playing time? So I, I want to hear and pay, you know, give attention to all those all those people that are feeling that way. Um, like I said, it's just going to be merit based. So it's such an up and down season, too. If in game number two, you don't get the playing time that you get, I mean, game number three is going to roll around. There's, there's, it's a nine game season. Exactly. And, and, you know, it's basically everybody makes the playoff. So we're using the season to see who, who responds in what situation, how people react to the adversity and, and maybe when they think they should be playing them and they're not, what do they do? How do they lead? What, how do they act? How do they, you know, affect the teammates around them? And, uh, you know, there's so many leaders on this team. Like I didn't even mention James Forbes or Jerry Janiga on the backside or, um, you know, Andrew Cernus is a, a player that we're looking to step up and do a key role that's a rookie. So, and, and there's plenty of players that I'm missing and, and not even mentioning right now. But anyways, there's there's so many leaders on this team that we're going to we're gonna lean on them to, to help handle these situations. There's going to be ups and downs and, and we're just going to, we're going to work through them. I hope there's a spot on the bus if we're going to New Jersey again this year for me. Absolutely. The more the merrier, for sure. And, and uh, by the way, I, I, now that I'm mentioning names, like I, I feel like I need to mention um, names. I, I can't forget them. So like Kale Bowman and, and Danny McMahon, um, men in the nets back there. Kale was the MVP of our division last year and, and just a, a phenomenal player and goalie mm -hmm. and, and also a, a great leader. Um, and, and Danny's going to, you know, see some important minutes and some important playing time, too. So up and down the lineup forwards, defensemen, and, and goalie, like we're so, we're so strong. So that's just going to make people come at us even more. So, and yeah, plenty of room on the bus, plenty of room on the bus. We got to get there first. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, don't want to look ahead too, too far. Anything uh, else? You Coach, Coach Strecker add? would have something to say about that. Right. Yeah. Anything else you want to add about this upcoming season, obviously follow on nbhl.com through the newsletter that I will, I will be providing. Um, and of course, uh, the CSHL website, if there's photos or any other type of information, anything else you want to add today, uh, Josh? I guess to start out, just a big thank you to you, Mark. I think of, uh, you know, the old adage, if a tree falls in the forest, does anybody hear it or see it or no, whatever it is? Does it actually happen if nobody witnesses it? And you're, you're a big part of putting us on the map, right? Like uh, our success showed up, but un unless anybody hears about it, you know, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. So your coverage and your exposure that you give us, we're also grateful for. And it makes us feel like, you know, we're just a bunch of old sweaty guys playing hockey here, but uh, you put us on the map and make it feel like we're, you know, uh, this is really important. It, it is to us. And I think your exposure makes it important to other people too, that are curious about this or, or want to have access to, it or want, maybe even want to play or, or join the sport or uh, improve their game and, and their skill level. So that's what this is about is more access to the game, more legitimacy on a, on a uh, very legitimate level being the national ball hockey league. And I guess the only thing to add is that we're excited about this event. So if this is intriguing to you and inspiring, like come out and check us out. I think, I think we're going to have a ton of people out there that, that check out this exhibition game. I've already gotten some messages and texts from people I haven't heard from in a while that are planning on coming out and it's two months away when we record this. So exactly. um yeah, we're I'm excited. Come come out and check us out, even if you're just a little bit curious, and then make ourselves available if somebody wants to contact you, Mark, or, or me and ask more about um the program, NBHL, whatever. Um we're we're here to answer questions and we can help you get involved if you so want to. For those that are watching, what time is that uh game on Saturday on May 6th? It is scheduled for 2 30 p.m. Uh things can happen between now and then. So we'll say that's a tentative time. Um, but we'll keep updating the newsletter, et cetera. So um, there's plenty of sources out there that even if you're watching this interview, which was made in the past, uh just check out and, and confirm the time with somebody who's definitely going and uh we'll see you out there. All right. Josh Greco of the defending champion, Queen City Crowns. Thanks for joining me today and good luck on the season. Absolutely. Thanks, Mark.